There's a, a, another piece to this financial thing that I wanted to I wanted to share with you. Let me dig out some of this. I, you know, throughout the weeks here, I've been setting stories aside for one of these days that's not just a politics day to share with you. Uh, you know, for the deep dive stuff. In, in some ways, I'm really looking forward to the election being over because one of my favorite things to do on this program is to take a topic you know, like the economy or, you know, there's a bunch of science topics that I've been piling up stuff on and just do a deep dive into it so that we all get, you know, really well informed and, and understand something better. And it's, it's kind of difficult to do when, when it's like, you know, crossfire going on. <laughs> it's all these campaigns. But I'm, I'm going to stay focused on the economy here for just a minute. This is uh, from a piece by, uh, uh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Y-V-E-S. How do you pronounce that name? Eve. Thank you. <laughs> Eve Smith, uh, which is actually a pseudonym for uh, the woman who I believe runs the NakedCapitalism.com website, uh, says, uh, get a cup of coffee. This is an important, comprehensive, well-argued article. Okay, so it's not by Eve Smith. It's by Richard Vague. And... Um, it, it, the title is, you know, why does the IMF keep badly missing its global growth forecast? And, and what does it have to do with the 2016 presidential election? One of the key and overlooked reasons for this disappointing growth, they know, in other words, why, why is, why are the economies sluggish here in the United States, in Europe and, and, and in Japan for that matter? One of the key and largely overlooked reasons for this disappointing growth is hiding in plain sight, the increasing global burden of private debt, combination of business debt and household debt. Now, you've all seen the ads from the Peterson Foundation about how our public debt, that is the government debt, our, our national deficit and debt, is going to hurt us. Well, that's nonsense. But the private debt really has tremendous potential to harm us. Private debt now is larger than government debt and has more impact on economic outcomes, uh, writes Richard Vague. Uh, more telling, since 1950, U.S. private debt has almost tripled from 55% of GDP to 150% of GDP. And most other economies have shown a similar trend. So we owe three times more than our entire GDP. Runaway private debt growth brought about the 2008 crisis in the United States, the 1991 crisis in Japan, and the 1997 crisis in Asia, just to name just three. When too high private debt becomes a drag on economic growth, it chips away at the margin of growth trends. When private debt enters the range of 100 to 150 percent of GDP, it impedes economic growth. When private debt is high, consumers and businesses have to divert an increasing portion of their income to paying interest and principal on that debt, and they spend and invest less as a result. After private debt reaches these high levels, it suppresses demand. Because, I mean, you know, who wants to go out and buy something when they owe $30,000 on their credit card? It's time to start paying that down rather than buying more stuff. High debt makes these borrowers more reluctant to spend or take on more debt. Further, an estimated $6.4 million of the 56 million mortgages held in the United States are still severely underwater. Millions more are less severely underwater or just barely above. U.S. private debt growth has disproportionately affected the least well-off Americans. In fact, since 1989, this is the year the Fed started looking at this stuff, the debt level of the 20% of U.S. households with the lowest net worth has grown two and a half times faster than all other households. In other words, poor people, the bottom 20% of our economy, of, of, you know, of folks in our country are, are two and a half times more in debt now than they were in 1989. Consumers are, in fact, carrying 13 percent more debt as a percentage of GDP than we were in 2000, the moment before the ill-fated private debt boom that led to the 2008 crisis. And he says, because this current private debt burden suppresses spending and investment growth rates in the United States, Europe and Japan, which have high debt to GDP ratios of 150, 162, and 167 percent respectively, uh, are, are low. And he says now China is beginning to suffer the consequences of its recent private debt binge. Since 2008, it has poured on 18 trillion dollars in new private non-government loans. The chickens may be coming home to roost. This is concerning, shall we You're say. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program.